Hi, Markus. What was your first computer? My first computer? Uh, let me think. It was a Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48K. With the rubber keys? Yes, it, it actually had rubber keys, and I actually used it as a rubber once, really. <laughs> oh, okay. This was the uh, black machine with uh, colorful keys, right? E let, let, let me think. Yes, it was a black machine. Yeah, 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 right, right, yeah. And you, you, had, you had commands. You had commands printed on them in different colors, and if you press the key, you, you always got a complete command. It exactly. Was really cool, what right? was run? What, what what was run? <laughs> I I think I think if you press the R, you had to run. Key. Yeah, exactly. I, run. I forgot <laughs> the load. Probably L. But uh, this is really surprised yeah, me. Think... So R was run and L was uh, I think load from data set something. Yeah, yeah. I I I could not swear on that, but I think from 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 my belly, it's L. Yeah. If if I if I should do it today, I would press L. Yeah, of, of today's of course. <laughs> So um, what you did, why you got the machine? Oh, why I got the machine? Actually, I didn't get it. I, I grabbed it. Oh. <laughs> my, my, my father got it. Uh, he was working in the production industry, and they, they got a computer in class, and he bought that machine for his office. And to learn it, he, he brought it to our home. And uh, when he was sleeping, I went to the television set and tried what this thing is doing. So actually, it was his machine. <laughs> okay. And, and were you actually allowed to do so, or was it like a yeah. se secret machine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was allowed to do that um, because you couldn't break it, actually. Yeah. So it was safe. And uh, when when he learned that I was better in basic than he Then he left the machine at home, and that was really cool. So it became mine after a year. <laughs> so you immediately started programming, or what was the history with that? Yeah, actually, um, I was so fascinated from from that rubber key system of programming <laughs> that that I really wanted to to find out everything that this machine could do. And um, yeah, I, I actually wrote small computer games in Basic. Yeah. But what's, uh, what interests me, I, I mean, you got the machine, yeah. you saw the keys, yeah. but how you got yeah. the idea or, that you actually can program it or h how you actually knew that uh, there's something like programming even exists? If, if you switch on a static spectrum, it's directly in the programming mode. Yeah, but this is so, just like cursor. It's like it says, I forgot what it says. Uh, in the top, yeah. it's like, no, Sinclair 9082, whatever, and then you had blinking cursor, nothing else, right? Yeah, I I could not remember really, but I think my father told me that ah, okay. that these words is is for programming. I, okay. But this is just guessing. And and you started immediately programming, or you loaded game first, or what was the story? No, I I didn't I didn't have any software. I just had a machine. I I, I had no manual either. I mm -hmm. I just typed the keys and looked what happened, and uh, you couldn't give the wrong syntax. This, this is different from programming today. Um, the the input system was made in a way that you can only give perfectly well basic syntax. So um, it was rather easy to learn just by pressing that rubber keys. Mm -hmm. I had, I had actually, the next yeah. the next spectrum. It was not rubber keys rather than the serious one, 128. But yeah. this, I I think R and L, L still worked, but I had to write the commands with usual keys. But what ah, I, I see. So the, the question is, uh, but if you wrote something like, you know, let this, I think this is basic syntax, let a, or, or dim, I forgot dim, or let yeah. something like this. Yeah. So you could declare variables. Yeah. But you had to write. They had, they had both. They had both. Yeah. You had to write let or dim, right? Or were uh, the, the rubber the, key with the let and dim? Um, there, 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 you, you couldn't write text on, on, on it in the programming mode. If, if you press D, you got a complete word dim. And uh, if if you pressed, I I don't know it it was L I don't know, or set I think it was set. Yeah. Um, exactly. you, you got you you got the complete word. You couldn't even remove single characters from that words, uh -huh. so you couldn't do it wrong. Okay. You, you 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 had one one rubber key per basic command, mm -hmm. and it, it even switched the mode. So when you wrote 
let, for example, is switch the mode to I want text, then you could write text for the variable name, and then you had to press a different key, it was a colored key, I, I think it was green or red, to go back into that syntax mode, so when you press the next key, you got a complete word. Okay, so this was uh, like a DSL, right, almost? Yeah, yeah, it, it was like a DSL, right. I, I forgot about that. So uh, I think my spectrum behaves a little bit differently because um, I, because I remember there were prepared commands, but I had to write a little bit and I did a lot of wrong. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if, if you wrote something, uh, let's say a for loop, so you immediately got what for loop does or what, what was the story. You remember that? Uh, actually, I think you only got a word for. Yeah. And then you had to write text. I, because if you program, you know, you need yeah. a concept for loop first and then mm -hmm. if else or mm -hmm. something like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, if you have no menu or yeah. nothing, it is really pretty hard to find out how it works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was there was a day when I got a manual. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> but it, it was some weeks later. It was okay. some weeks later. Yeah. And before the manual, you managed to do something workable? So did it actually run or we just played well, with the... Sequences. You, I, I I could write sequences and, and really I can remember when I learned what a loop is, and it was fascinating that you can spell lots of code <laughs> by a single single command like for i is five to ten for example. I was proud yeah. of myself learning go sub. There was a go what? to right and go sub it went somewhere and came back. I cannot remember that. I, yeah, I go sub was like yeah the first design pattern. I was the king, you know, knowing about oh, go sub. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so very cool. And then you started to playing to 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 writing games, right? Yeah, right. So what was your first I, program you wrote after getting the manual? I cannot remember the really first program I wrote, but yeah, I but can, the next the nice one. Yeah, the nice one. <laughs> that, that, that's funny. Um, I, I, I was like. 10 or 12 years old, so don't expect something really good. Uh, what I wrote was uh, that that you can control your hands on, on the screen. You can go left and right. And on the top of the screen, there were chicken. And the chicken, they, they let go eggs. Mm -hmm. And you had to catch the eggs. And if you miss the egg, then you get clutter on the screen. So yeah. I can remember that, yes. But it's actually pretty cool. So actually a nice idea. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't know how to do real good graphics, so I patched the font. You you could do colored font on the machine. Exactly. So I, I Yeah. And I patched the characters. So one character is the normal egg, one character is the cluttered egg. Okay, nice. So and it, and, yeah. and how much time did you spend with you no know, fiddling with the computer? An hour a day or what? I, I I think I had to school. F well, I I sleep eight hours. I go to school eight hours. So I think the the rest eight hours was programming. Wow! <laughs> Every okay. day. Yeah, yeah. It, it was my sole hobby. Yeah, and, and this is amazing. And you were twelve. Ten or twelve, yes. So the, then I think with thirteen you could write already serious stuff, right? Uh, actually, I started my own business when I was fourteen. <laughs> I didn't knew that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what was least, it? These people do. Um, it, it had to do with production machinery. Um, oh, even it, more it impressive. Was a, it, it was a software for managing uh, the source code of the production machines. I oh, you wrote you basically you... Git. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wrote something that is able to to root text files from disk to uh to serial port and vice versa on the Commodore Pad 4004. Uh-huh. So th this this was the first thing I wrote for commercial use and my my income was 100 Deutschmarks. And I was so cool so so glad to to really get Deutschmarks for writing some some source code. It felt really good. Mhm. Mm so um, and it was really impressive. It, it needed me about eight hours to write the program. Yeah. So. <laughs> so you were way better than me. I think with 13, I worked a whole day in the wood industry and I earned, I think, 60 Deutschmarks. 
So okay. uh, I would be, uh, and I also had a computer, but I had no business with computers, you know. So this was you were better off with like than me. Well, I I didn't I didn't say that after this 100 Deutschmarks I ever made money again. It, <laughs> it <laughs> okay. needed, needed 20 years or so. <laughs> okay. So uh, two days of my work paid off then, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the point. <laughs> okay, cool. And um. And the uh, Commodore you had, I think I had Commodore. It was the predecessor of C64. I forgot. It was like VIC yeah. Vic something. Could it, could it be 16K Commodore? And and your yeah. was more serious machine. I don't know your pet Commodore. What 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 was it? Is yeah. it better than C64 or was it one before C64? It, it was different. <laughs> it was different. Okay. It, it, it was different. It it was developed after the C sixty four. It it, it uh -huh. was more powerful. Okay. But it had no colors at all. Okay. It it was a competitor to the first PC. Okay. But totally uh, totally closed system. So you you had to buy everything from uh, Commodore. Mm -hmm. It was a huge machine with with a steel case with. With a huge keys to Taiwan, totally different from the C64. Okay. And he had a better basic dialect. You had more uh, commands that you can give, but you had no commands for graphics or something. It was text only. Okay. It was just for, for moving files around. So, and you sold your software to your dad, right? Right. No, not to my dad, but to his dad. Uh, to, oh. to, to his boss. To his boss. To his boss, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it was, uh, uh, and then the, you have the to sign story. the contract that you you are not allowed to to sell it again to the competitors, and this was your problem, probably, right? <laughs> well, well, I should I should have to, done this. Um, the, the whole story is um, that there were professional systems that could do that file moving already uh, directly from the machine vendors, and they wanted ten thousand Deutschmarks for the same program oh. because. There, there was a monopole, mm -hmm. so you you can you can use it or you, or, or you have nothing, and that's why they were so glad to have something different. Okay, but, but I mean, I, I one hundred Deutschmark yeah. is not a great business. I have to to to, to, to tell you. No, no, I, I think so. I, I learned that one hundred Deutschmarks is is not much money, but as a child, you you have no reference. So. Yeah, no, this is perfect. I, no, this is really perfect. Yeah. So, and and you stick with serious programs, or have you kept? You know, you went back to gaming, or what you did next? So I'm really curious now. Well, I I was as a, a hobby programmer for for games for mm -hmm. several years. Um, I actually had a Commodore sixty four. Mm -hmm. for for some years and wrote uh, programs for that with real graphics and with colors <laughs> okay. but um let me think what what came next yes i i went i went to high school and in high school um in that time my parents started their own business and they bought a real uh pc I, I think it was an XT or something or mm -hmm. 3 386 i i can remember and it it was a shock. It had no graphics. It was uh, white screen with with black text, and you had to learn basic from scratch again. It was mm -hmm. a, a completely different dialect. And uh, I, I first wrote some business applications, some some factoring applications in basic Microsoft Basic six, I think. And in high school, at that time in high school, I learned Turbo Pascal. And mm -hmm. Turbo Pascal was a, a real step forward because you could use uh, it to write graphical UIs. Mm -hmm. So I wrote small business applications in, in Turbo Pascal. And um, after, after high school, I came uh, to German Army, mm -hmm. um, to, to Luftwaffe. Oh, and uh -huh. there I I had a completely different job. So you were at, so is, Luftwaffe is like Top Gun, you know, translated to. No, no not really. <laughs> Air Force. No, no, I, I hope that. I hope Air that Force. when. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I they they always told me it's German Air Force, but it's completely different. They, it's just the name. What we had to do actually um, had to do with a data transfer from radar stations to nuclear uh, rockets so oh 
um, there, there was an internet before the internet, you know. Mm -hmm. So the the private part of the internet, this was ours, and we used it uh, to control where to shoot our atomic rockets that were located some some kilometers beside where I lived. So th this was my time directly after the Cold War, and it had to do with computers, but I was not a programmer. I had a different job there. Okay. And after that, I didn't know what to do. So, so what you did then, uh, uh, you just uh, calibrated the rocket? <laughs> what was your <laughs> no. job? <laughs> <laughs> no, a actually, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. The the the, air, the airport where I was located mm -hmm. had the job to to control the air traffic and to control the data traffic between the radar stations and the rockets. And my particular job in the first time was just to keep people out of that. And later, my my job was to surf. So I was a waiter actually on that on that airport. Okay. It was nice. I had had some some guests which were like ministers, and that. So <laughs> it, it was a nice time. <laughs> but but okay. it has nothing to do with programming. Okay. <laughs> so, and and after that, I I didn't know what to do, and actually, I was near to starting uh, to learn how to repair cars and all that. So, hey, I uh, you you enjoyed cars. the army time? Yeah, really, I enjoyed that. So, uh, I, now I, now the question now now a serious yeah. question to you. Do you know the ZDV three twenty eleven? I think from the name. Zentrale Dienstvorschrift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I can remember that there were things like that, but I totally forgot all of them. Yeah, this was uh, my way to hack a little bit the system. So yeah. uh, the uh, this is like we had to learn, you know, a theory, and this was like it, in the army there was like an, a manual what to do, you know, if you are in the wild, mm -hmm. and. Um, and uh, the the ZDV three twenty, it was funny for me because there were adv ad there were uh, like you know best practices like this. If you go, yeah. if you reach the river and you have to cross the river, if you the water reach you know your mouth, you have uh, automatically start you know with your swimming uh, procedure. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard about that. Yeah, actually. and and I found that, and I learned that you know out of, and I learned it completely from memory. So I knew exactly, but only the funny things. And the next one was, if you climb up the uh, the tree, if you reach you know the peak, you have to stop. So I I learned this, okay. and if we were somewhere, I I went you know to my boss and say, look, this is the river. If we reach you know if the watermark reaches my mouth, I will <laughs> automatically you know start swimming. And he couldn't do nothing about that because it was the official rule from the army, you know. And if we were in the forest, I say, look, this is a tree. If I will climb up, if I will now uh, reach the peak, I will stop climbing. And they couldn't do nothing against that because it was the official way. So this is like, you know, uh, this was, a, I really enjoyed the army, I have to say. So um, I try, you know, yeah. to, to hack the system. And, and yeah. they could do nothing against that. This was the, the, the funny stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about that ZDV, but I never read it my own. So oh, yeah, I, this I is the first day I read it. Someone mentioned that. <laughs> so ZDV, and they want to know, the, they tell like, you know, uh, you have to know ZDV. I was like, where is it? And they say, uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't know. It's like, yeah, if you tell about it, I would like to learn. I'm a good soldier. So, okay, then uh, they, they gave me the book. And I look at Wikipedia. The book is classified, actually. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was really curious whether I so I went to Wikipedia and searched for the ZDV and uh, and this was like uh yeah. So so I revealed you know now a top secret uh, uh army uh stuff yeah. oh. to, to the audience. So we, we have we have to cut this from Yeah 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 from, so, so uh, yeah. because now <laughs> no, the enemies know, know how to cross the river. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the, the difference between you and me was I was at the Air Force, uh -huh. and at the Air Force, we, we do not cross rivers. Yeah. If we have to cross a river, then we call the the normal army, it's called the HEO, yeah? Mm -hmm. And they they will send us a ship. So yeah, we, yeah. We can, know, this was, was we can, my thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we cannot swim at the Air Force. We don't need it. Yeah, but you had something like this, no? Uh, you have to start the engine before the airplane takes off or something like this, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Actually, actually, I had I had rules like that for making coffee. 
No, so, no uh, kidding. You remember one one rule? No, I don't know the, the, the exact wording, but in in Bundeswehr you have rules for everything. Yeah. So we we actually had rules how to to make coffee, how to clean the tables, oh. uh, where to store the cleaning stuff. So everything had a rule. It, so I only knew you know, the, the the funny rules from the woods, but uh, in, I yeah. would learn these this rules as well. So I would be complete complete rule engine, you know, at at, yeah. at, at the Bundeswehr. The someone, engine, yeah. I would just speak, you know, DSL. If someone would approach me, it's like you rule twenty one, we cross now <laughs> something, and, <laughs> and this was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is yeah. how rule engine started. I think this was the Bundeswehr, you know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was invented directly for them. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so after the army, uh, you started yeah. what? I, I, I didn't know what to do with my life. Oh, like, I, I don't know why, but um, I, I nearly was about to to start learning repair cars, so I, I can repair some parts of my part. But my my parents told me that maybe it would be a better idea to start studying informatics. Yeah. So together with a, a fellow colleague of mine, which is sitting directly two meters from from here, hi okay. Georg, <laughs> I I went uh, to informatics class, and then I I noticed that we we know already everything that want to t- tell us. Okay, so was, and where was it? it was Which funny, university but a was it? Boring. it? It doesn't exist anymore, I think. Yeah, but where? Um, it where was, was it? In Germany? Where? In Böblingen. Ah, okay. So it was uh, in Böblingen, so it was an IBM shop, basically, I guess, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 actually, I don't know the exact story, but if, if I remember it correctly, it, it started as uh, a school for IBM and, and Hewlett Packard and something like that. So they needed stuff in the 70s, and um, they, they had that school, but. Uh, it it was not called university. It it had some different name, Acad- academy or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And you enjoyed this school, so you, were you successful or? Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, actually, I'm. I'm proud uh, about uh, the school because um, only very very few people know the school at all, and and the title they give you it's called um, staatlich geprüft. Wow, which means uh, I'm I'm allowed to run my own business in in computer programming. Um, Staatlich geprüft means this is uh, certified by the government. Yes, I, I I think in the US there is no title t- like that. Yeah, at all. Is, but yeah, what but what's the entire title? I'm just curious. Uh, Staatlich geprüfter Informatiker. Wow, this is your uh, certi- uh, there is your you are a computer engineer certified by the government. Yeah, that's that's a different. In in Germany, uh, the government can certify things, mm-hmm. and um, you can go to university, which is something different. Yeah, because you are not certified by state; you're certified by your professors. So uh-huh. that that that's a difference because. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm even worse law. because I'm not. I was not at the university. I was at the University okay. of Applied Science or Fachhochschule. Yeah. So I think I'm not certified by anyone. I guess. Yeah, you are certified <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually. I, by, by whom? By the professor as well? You mean? Yeah. It's, okay. it's the same like with normal universities. Otherwise, because you are certified, probably you could certify me now, you know? No. No? No, 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 no. I, oh. I, I cannot certify anybody. <laughs> yeah, we have no problem right now. Okay. So you are certified <laughs> by the government and I'm certified yeah. two levels lower by my professor. If you say it's true, yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't say it's lower actually, because if if you if if you would repeat it today, uh, then my title would be an associate degree, and your title would be a, a bachelor or master. Oh. So actually, my title is is less worth. <laughs> now, but back then, okay. So we have to repeat it, Marcus, and then you know now it, then we are talking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, and anyway, uh, yes, it was fun actually. Um, and um, you, you, about the success, uh, yes, I, I passed all the exams with zero faults, and I was awarded some some cool. awards. And um, I actually worked as a teacher for a very short time there. So, so, so you passed all exams without, like you know, very good with one zero without any. 
Yeah. So that's that's interesting not, not to me just, right now. Not just not just all exams, but uh, the final exam and all prior uh, exams. So, uh, how much you had to learn? This is what interests me to achieve nothing, that. Nothing, nothing at all. That in my in my university, I also tried to you know to do that, but this was like yeah. not possible. There were some you know some teachers which were absolutely crazy. So mm -hmm. to give you an idea, so uh, there was one professor. Who uh, who wanted that this was a numeric numerical mathematics and the problem was we had to pass some algorithm to a library and the, I, I remember the name of the library N A G numerical something and he didn't told us that the library is written in Fortran I think and mm -hmm. the problem was all the arrays were reversed so you know the 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 first index was the last one and so forth so you tried like crazy uh -huh. I spent you know hours and it never worked. And um, and in the first exam, uh, everyone <coughs> failed, and but one guy got a, th a number three, which is uh, okay. And then I repeated that, and it also got you know a, a three. But it was like a miracle that I actually achieved that. So and there were other you know other uh, other classes like you know operating system where you had to learn a lot. Uh, you you couldn't just you no know, without nothing it wouldn't be possible because you had to you know you had to know something. It's not like you know in it was not logical. You had to new stuff. So I'm just interested. Yeah. Was it different in your school or? Well, I, I actually, I I didn't learn for programming. There, certainly, there there were classes like psychology and yeah, exactly. uh, running running a business. I, certainly, I had to learn for that. You, but uh, you you learned, but you had to learn more than nothing, right? Yes. <laughs> I, I didn't have to learn for the programming class. Yeah, this is this is true. So this was also true in my case. So yeah. I just uh, because I did uh, I just program before, so this was not a problem at all. Yeah. The problem yeah. was in my school not the programming. You know, it's everything around, yeah. like the business uh, yeah, okay. and and the, yeah, uh -huh. I have physics, mathematics mm -hmm. was hard. So the, I had to really to learn that. So there was no way to pass without learning for me at least. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it it was a bit different in our school because. Um, the high school I came from had a special train for technology, mm -hmm. so I already had uh, the, the certifications for two semesters of um, engineering and two semesters of physics. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't have to learn mathematic things. Also, okay. or, or technical things. Ah, so okay. So then I got it. So before. if you just focus yeah. on, you know, on 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 um, informatics, yeah. so yeah. computer science, then I'm with you. So then, right. then it's doable. Okay, cool. So what yeah. you did after your, or uh, when you learned, so you still stick with basic and, and Turbo Pascal, or what was your next programming language? Uh, I, I I had lots of, of computer languages. I, I, I stopped call, uh, counting it few years ago I, I think i learned 20 or 25 languages cool and um lots of assembler dialects mm -hmm. Kobol. <laughs> Kobol? Mm -hmm. sql mm -hmm. all, all, all that and when when uh, uh, the, the university was over i started working near flughafen stuttgart mm -hmm. there's a small town called echterdingen mm -hmm. Where I was a consultant to external companies uh, like uh, Umos or like uh, Daimler Benz or something, mm -hmm. but th this wasn't fun. I, I had no fun consulting people. I, I wanted hack code, mm -hmm. so I asked my dear friend Georg sitting here in my oh. office <laughs> if I can come in in the company where he was working. So mm -hmm. I went there as a programmer in 1997 mm -hmm. and uh, since then I'm here oh and uh, yeah and, and when you learn Java um, th this was in the last semester of my study I think this was in June 1997 uh -huh. and you enjoyed Java immediately or you said like a stupid language yeah yeah I I, I Thought it's the best thing I ever have seen, okay. <laughs> and um, we actually convinced our uh, our boss to do Java here in the company in two thousand or two thousand one. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and since then, I'm doing more or less solely Java. And about the same time, I started my career as as a conference speaker and and author mm-hmm. and blogger. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, I I think you you don't know me actually from my from my day job. It's no, no, I don't. I don't know you. I, I will tell you how 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 I I found you. But um, yeah. but uh, which programming language you knew before you learned Java? You already knew Python and know the the funky languages I, I, or. I, I didn't know Python, but I knew a lot of uh, basic dialects, mm-hmm. m- machine language, assembly mm-hmm. languages, C, C++, Pascal, Turbo Pascal, Delphi, mm-hmm. uh, Power Builder. I don't know if you've yeah, ever of heard course. of Power Builder. Yeah, they were like uh, <laughs> yeah. t- uh, 4 GL or how it's called, 3, 4 yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, so there there are lots of systems. And yeah, Power Builder is where like, you can you, you, you had you know the binding between UI and the database built in, right? Yes, mm-hmm. re- very deeply, and it's, mm-hmm. it's re- really a bad hack. And now he just Georg went just uh, out of the door. Now I can tell it. He's actually doing Power Builder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is his day job, and he hates it. Okay, I think <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask uh, whether he 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 shames you know about that, but uh-huh. yeah, he he really shames about that. <laughs> but I, I, what we should do rep- just for fun, the, the Georg should do with us. We should submit a talk, you know, to a conference like yeah. uh, the new way of <laughs> building UI or AI-driven whatever. And he yeah. should just, you know, show Power Builder. I bet, you know, many yeah. people will say, this is the great possible thing and we could start, you know, a new wave of something. Well, I, I, I think he would love to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this would be a nice thing. And I think if we submit it to Jax and we talk, you know, with the organizers, uh, they could yeah. actually allow us to do this just as an like, experiment. And you, you know you know Sebastian better yeah. than me. Yeah. I don't know if he likes that. <laughs> I can ask him uh, at the Jax. So, uh, yeah. yeah. But this would be nice yeah. because, you know, uh, there are lots of stuff which already was, you know, very popular 10 years ago. So we could you know, do an experiment. What actually the audience will say about that so that you can draw very quickly you know the ui and, and bind it to database we, we we will tell the audience that it's new yeah it's, it's this is the, this totally is the thing. new thing yeah yeah exactly yeah 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 no cool. I, I i don't think he will do that <laughs> okay uh power builder and then you enjoy java and uh, you remember your yes. first application you wrote with java so your first uh, more serious application or something you remember the- the first serious application I wrote was in 2001, mm-hmm. and it was uh, the application server part of uh, complaint management software we are still selling today, actually. Okay. And this this was the time when I learned about EJB 1.0. Huh. So that's you how remember, I came in. You, you yeah. remember how you had to configure the EGB 1.0? Do you remember that? Yeah, with lots of funny XML files. No, this was... no the EGB 1.0. <laughs> the 1.0? Yes. What, 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 wasn't the, the deployment descriptors 1.0? They were, but not in XML. Really? The 1.0 de- deployment descriptors, they, you had to write DSL in Java, and they were serialized on disk. This was okay, the very so... first spec. So we had uh-huh. uh, we had like I forgot the tool like uh, and you you had a tool you launched the tool and it just uh-huh. persisted the configuration the deployment descriptors uh-huh. um, in a binary format and they were rewrite and then the XML craziness started and there was a huge demand everyone wanted to have XML back then and then it should be one zero something so the next uh, I don't know whether one one or one zero something uh, mm-hmm. they introduced XML afterwards and everyone was happy uh-huh. and. Yeah, I, I see. I started directly with the XML stuff. So and there was, was one evil one book, one evil book from O'Reilly, and the name was mm-hmm. Java and XML. I remember it exactly because I was a Java one back then, and I saw the book. And uh-huh. with that book, you know, the XML craziness started, and they uh, everything was XML. And in one project, even they started in DB two. They wanted to convert the database into XML, and, uh, <laughs> and they and they were. <laughs> So, because the table, if you look at the table, you have the data, and the table, you have the metadata, right? So, this is already almost like XML, so you can easily convert it back and forth. But they stored in the columns XML as well, to uh, to, to have direct binding, and then they had to buy new hardware because the the, the database blew up. I I, I could imagine that it was 
totally fast and it yeah. was really fun to do it <laughs> yeah and and i was i know a young young programmer back then i look at that yeah. and, and and everyone's so convinced that this is the right thing to do and it's like but why what, what do we get out of that and asking the question was not 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 very you know political correct in the company and this was also my first touch with um, xml but how you like the hbs well back then i liked Mm -hmm. them a lot actually it, yeah it, it, i i have to tell that we started to write an application server without ejb before you you so own application it. server or an application yeah. yes. Which, uh -huh. yes we 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 started to write the application server itself and um we, Why? we stopped that when we saw there ah, okay. is something like ejb okay oh, okay i got you mm -hmm. yeah and, so what uh, i remember so, now i was in a huge german company back then And there were already application servers available, and I wanted to use them. And they told me, "No, we have our own." So, okay, yeah. okay. And I, f I forgot the name. And uh, and we have to use it because it's our own. So okay. And mm -hmm. and how to use it? So we don't know there. But the guy who implemented this is there in the office, and I can ask him. So I went to the guy, and I asked him, "No, we need probably stateful session beans. They're not supported." So okay. And and uh, there was like no twenty questions. Nothing was supported except stateless session beans. So it was a huge mm -hmm. amount of work, and then you get you no know, hello world on screen, and this was you know the EJB Java guru at the company back then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. This was also fun. I forgot the name of the server, so I will have to remember that because uh, I always mention that you know that you can yeah. also implement an application server if you have nothing to do, but usually you should use one. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Which I'm, server you I'm, used I'm, back then? Um, we started with Borland. Oh, what's what's the name? It was from Borland. Borland, I, I uh, Borland inter Enterprise Server. In price application yeah. server. Yeah, in price like exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and we, we we wrote the application on that, which was rather funny. And then mm -hmm. we learned they won ten thousand Deutschmarks per core mm -hmm. uh, from our customers, and uh, our customers said, "No, we we don't want to pay." such a lot of money mm -hmm. so we searched for a solution and after some search we came across um it, uh, what was the name jo jonas it was jonas yeah uh -huh. jonas application server mm -hmm. which was open source and was free mm -hmm. so uh, we used that and shipped jonas to hundreds of companies worldwide and i became a contributor for Jonas in, in the early days. Oh, okay. And that's why I came to open source. Ah, so it's actually a fun, funny story. Yeah, Interesting yeah. story. Uh -huh. So I, I wrote some features for the, the, the Jonas server in 2002 or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was unstable. So Your features or, or <laughs> after, no. you, after you committed the features? <laughs> oh, no, only my features. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the early days of Jonas was was really really a big instability. So uh, we went later than to Glassfish, mm -hmm. which was pretty new. In, yeah, in that and with Jonas, I got around two thousand three, two thousand four, probably some assignments because of stability. And I remember there was uh -huh. something like uh, German Rewe or Aldi or something like that. Yeah. And they had a problem with that, that uh, like the EJBs don't, they had memory leak in the uh, EJB yeah. pooling, as far as yeah, I remember. As and we fixed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you fixed that. <laughs> or we fixed that yeah, without committing. <laughs> back then for me, oh. I thought it, it is impossible for me, you know, to commit something back. So I, uh -huh. for me, it was like uh, they, they will never accept, you know, my contribution because they are like, mm. you know, the gods of programming are in the open source mm. world I, i'm just a mm. consultant so this was like ne never even thinking about committing back i would say mm, i see mm -hmm. i see okay. I, i learned uh, from from the jonas team the openness of the process and this was really fun actually but jonas Because is french right yeah yeah I, and uh, i was a couple france, of though. years ago at the jack in 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 france and they, and and jonas was very popular still because mm -hmm. they had french documentation yes That's the sole point. They mm -hmm. have French documentation. <laughs> Are you understand French? Ah, uh, very, very small bit. Okay. Okay. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I I cannot speak more than I I want a pizza or something. Yeah. I, I only I only can you know, spell bien, which is good, but nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
and yeah, uh, and yeah, and uh, Jonas is still alive. Yeah, Jonas mm -hmm. actually is still alive, and I I uh, learned a good friend in in the Jonas times. Mm -hmm. uh, he's from Austria, mm -hmm. and uh, I I met him last Christmas, and he told me his business still runs on Jonas, cool. and and he will not go away from that. So actually, some people are happy with that. Yeah, yeah. But for for, for my business, it, it was not stable enough. So I went to Glassfish. Okay. And the Glassfish team was even more friendly and open. That yeah. was really great to work with them in, in the early days, in the Sundays. Mm -hmm. um, and I contributed, uh, I, I wouldn't say a lot, but some features to Glassfish, particularly to the Eclipse, uh, what's the name? Link. Eclipse Top Link. Eclipse yeah, link. Eclipse, Eclipse link, right? It mm -hmm. was it was Oracle Top Link back then, and it became Eclipse Link, mm -hmm. and I contributed some parts of um, the 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 checks or S part. Uh, yeah, jersey. and uh, Glassfish yeah. people were really ex extremely friendly. So what I yes. remember is uh, there were the admin console in Glassfish One. And there was mm -hmm. a feature like, oh, it was called, it is, I think, still available, where you can visualize uh, the, the monitoring. So I was always into monitoring and you know, monitoring applications because I had to run serious applications. Mm -hmm. And without monitoring, mm -hmm. it was, for me, unthinkable to run something. So I never got, you know, Tomcat. Because uh, if you have Tomcat, mm -hmm. either you've write the whole monitoring by yourself and never no one did mm -hmm. it. It was like a you know, black mm -hmm. hole for me. But... Mm -hmm. um. Mm -hmm. with the glassfish uh, there's like something like flow I forgot that and I wrote an email on, on someone and I immediately got a response from the committer and I know mm -hmm. the guy still is Harpreet was his name and, and, and yes. he's now manager and something else and he was extremely friendly yeah, like Harpreet hey cool this yeah. good idea you could do this and this and then I just yeah. like okay this is really nice team I, I expected you know so like you know read the manual first so this was my expectation but it was completely different and uh, mm -hmm. I, what I really like in Glassfish was the the admin console actually, and, and not on the concept that the admin console, the XML, and the and the command line interface, you can manage you know the same things. So th this is what I liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what this I is how I met you because what you did back then, you posted from time uh -huh. to time, or you post were reposted at Java.net. This was like, uh, and uh -huh. I found Marcus Kark and Marcus Kark. Was like, but I thought you are from USA. I would never thought, you know, that you are from Germany, actually. <laughs> why, why do you think I was from USA? I don't know. Because uh, <laughs> because there are almost no Germans, right, in the Java e space. But actually, there, there were several. I, I met several uh, Germans in that space, but mostly on the user side. Actually. Yeah, exactly. But they, they, they were no, yeah. never saw. Yeah, yeah. So there were lots of users, but there was no one who wrote, yeah. you know, blog posts or something. But early then, it was really rare yeah. to find yeah. someone. So whatever I read yeah. was from USA, actually, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true, right? Yeah, and and that's how I came uh, to CheckSRS because um, I wanted to write for our business here, for my day job, um, an extension to Jersey, and mm -hmm. uh, I was told that the API I'm using is just Jersey specific, and and they are preparing um, a specification for a standard. And they, uh, they they asked me to use their standard, so mm -hmm. I I checked checks RS O dot one or something, yeah. and uh, gave input to checks RS, and then they asked me whether I want to become part of the expert group, um, because what I was doing uh, with checks RS was a bit different from what they are doing. They thought it's a good idea to to have this the second view on on their specification and. That's how I became an expert group member. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. like, you know, this is what the story about ivory towers. What I hear, you know, the spec is, you know, uh, just uh, uh, it's, uh, it was uh, created in the ivory tower of Sun Microsystems mm -hmm. or Oracle. And, and this was like, you know, theoretic, but this is, was not my experience at all. It yeah. always came from, from implementation. Actually, there, there are two views you, you have to share or, or, or to, to match when doing specifications, either you are a vendor or you are a user. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing the specification, you need both. And Oracle only had the few of of being a vendor. Yeah. So they were really glad to have the few of a user, particularly I... 
from from what I was doing because I needed to write extensions to Jack's Rest. Yeah, and this is what I remember. Not, this was your fight yeah. on the list uh, uh, yeah. with Oracle or Sun. When what I remember exactly was the discussion about caching. So you wanted to have client side caching. Yes. You remember that? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> and and the Oracle or Sun, I forgot actually. They they were yeah, but you could you could write you know an extension and you wanted to have it inside so you are w very particular about the client side caching this is what i what i what i remember so for what you are using jaxrs actually in your company so why why you need it uh, why do we need it <laughs> okay um I, i i have to tell you a bit what the application is doing first yeah so um the application actually is used to collect quality data mm -hmm. from production so mm -hmm. if, if you produce a car you mm -hmm. want to guarantee that it doesn't break down after five kilometers mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to collect a lot of information f from delivery of parts production of parts um, assembling of parts mm -hmm. and our software is helping you in collecting this and doing analysis what you need to do to improve the quality without spending more money. So that is, this is the core essence of it. So your and robots and the machines are, are, are sending data to you? or uh, In part, there are robots, and in part, this is uh, people um, having special uh, tools. Uh, the tools are sending the data into the PC, and the PC then sends it in a, a global database. Okay. And... Um, this all was written with EJB, mm -hmm. so it was using IIOP. Mm -hmm. And um, the administrators on on the production sites, they don't like IIOP. They had mm -hmm. problems with their firewalls and all that. Exactly. So, and, you, uh, so you know what... You You probably already did it, right? So you had to hack yeah. the uh, the IOP protocol to send, you know, I'm still alive, pink messages. Yeah. Not... yeah. Okay. <laughs> also had to do it. Okay. <laughs> So we, we wanted to get rid of IIOP, and um, we started to play with different protocols. And the funny thing is the first protocol we tried was CIFS. So mm -hmm. um, CIFS was Microsoft-specific back then, so we didn't really want to do that either. So next thing we tried was FTP, but it was not the best choice. And the next we came across was WebDAV. Exactly. And uh -huh. Web WebDAV had had uh, the thing that you you could uh, could bind it into your local client file system, mm -hmm. so you see files, mm -hmm. and on the other side it is HTTP, so you don't have a problem with your firewall. Mm -hmm. So what I actually wrote was a WebDAV implementation for Jersey, which allows you to share files between the production machines, which actually still until today work with files, not with HTTP. Mm -hmm. So we grab that files, um, put it on, on a virtual file system, which is WebDAV, and this uploads it to an application server as a put request or post request. This, this was in 2006 when we mm -hmm. did that. And when yeah. we had done that, we learned that it might be a good idea to have a client software directly on the machine, which does... A normal REST. So we learned what REST is. Mm -hmm. So uh, we used Jersey before REST, <laughs> actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we we wrote client-side software in Java to do the data uploads. Mm -hmm. so, and this is why we use REST and, and HTTP in our application. So I was fascinated by WebDAV, actually. And what I wanted to mm -hmm. do always is to write you know, a block engine or CMS system with WebDAV mm -hmm. just for fun. But mm -hmm. I never managed to do this because of my workload. And uh, my, my question to you is, is it still a thing, the web dev, or it is basically no, that? No, it's it's basically that. Mm -hmm. um, everybody we knew is is happy with, with REST interfaces. Mm -hmm. If they want more power, they use uh, MQTT meanwhile. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I never heard anybody telling me I want web dev back. We, okay. we removed it someday from the software and Mm -hmm. still, still so, 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 you, so what you did is you extended Jersey and then yes. uh, backend was still Glassfish V2, I think. And yeah, uh, yeah okay. And then you migrated to 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 Jersey with Jax uh, with REST and then to JAXRS, right? Right, right. Why so you wanted to decouple from Jersey in your case? Why you wanted to have a spec? That's a good question. 
maybe, maybe it was the, the history that we came from so far away from from Jonas, which was unstable, and from uh, IAS. So we had to switch the product so often. I, I think that that was the the feeling that we we should not bind to a product again. Yeah, this is what you usually learn very early. So in my case, I remember. There was in one project, you know, you know the server B E A. Yes. Yeah, and uh, B A. You, you know Wolf. You, yeah. you know Wolfgang Weigand. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he he wrote B E A. Yeah, this is yeah. yeah. He works at, at Oracle right now. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good friend. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so greetings to him. So he's a he's yeah. a, a I, I, Oracle employee, but uh, it yeah. you would never think about him that he works for Oracle, right? So he's like a nice yeah. hacker guy, I would say, really nice and polite guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's, he's really nice and polite, and I actually don't understand why he still is working for Oracle. <laughs> I, what, what I what I think he he found you know a nice business unit, and I mean Oracle is a great company, It's a huge company. There are different departments, you know. Yeah, sure. This sure, is every you know there is there are no I, I think all companies of a certain size are similar. I think so. Yes, actually. Yeah. But but meanwhile, through through all the history. Oracle became my my intimate foe. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> no, I, no I, you yeah you you wanted to talk about the application server. I interrupted you. No, uh, with the uh, with the um, Oracle thing is because it's also interesting. Just uh, um, I was a huge fan of Oracle actually at the beginning because I was fascinated, you know, by the name Oracle first. So I got this interesting name and mm -hmm. the uh, databases because it was like you know mysterious. So there were uh, in my world were some admins with uh, huge shelves of Oracle books, and there was like you no know, the the entire universum or ecosystem or something special, and everyone told you know the the the, the Oracle databases are very performant and so forth. And then I started with Java. And what I remember, Oracle also shipped a JVM, Aurora was called, to the Oracle database engine, which really fascinated me. So this is perfect because then we can run as Java stored procedures in the database. So this is a great mm -hmm. story. So I wanted to have that. And they also delivered, you know, IFS internet file system. So there was like mm -hmm. Java running entirely in the database, even better. And then they shipped, you know, um, Java on Palm Pilot from Oracle. And I found that at the uh, <laughs> systems uh, conference in Munich. So, and for me, it was Oracle like a you know, really nice company back then. And uh, so, this was why. Uh, uh, and now, it of course, it is also no. It really depends on management, right? But uh, at the beginning, Oracle was extreme pro Java, extremely. So, and uh, and uh, so I like. So for me, Oracle, IBM, Sun were perfect and great companies and IBM was no different so they had lots of innovation in Java space lots of utilities back then you remember the um, developer works and alpha works all the yes, website yes. was was great yes. stuff and and all alpha works was a great site yes. yeah yeah so this was for me was also genius people you know, publishing stuff like crazy and 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 I I think that the the, the uh, Xerxes and Xelon also came from 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 this part mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, application servers. So, you wanted to say something about application servers, or I? I forgot, actually. I, I, you, you wanted to, to say something about the BEA server, but I don't know what. <laughs> the BEA server, one of my clients, uh, they run, uh, I, I remember, file services. And this file services was the idea that you can write a file using BA to disk. And BA will manage this somehow. And the next release of BA dropped this feature because it was there were not enough customers you now using the feature, and uh, we had a lot to do to migrate from the proprietary stuff. And then you learn very quickly that if you are depending on the implementation, it is uh, you might might be forced to migrate your application. Although there is no such requirement from the business from the from from the features. So and and then it was probably 2002, and then I said, okay, then we just will use the APIs and never the SPIs. And this is also what Sun Microsystem preached back then. But I have to say, it was the best decision ever. So since then, all my clients, this is what I'm actually exclus exclusively doing. You know, no dependencies, just use APIs, and uh, it worked. It it works really, really good. So. Uh, if you compare it right now, you know, with the trouble in JavaScript or, or other frameworks, uh, yeah, there, there was I, I'm in one project in uh, 2005. A client hired me, and uh, we did some architecture, and this was with the old WebSphere, but we already used EJB3, and they hired me again last year, 
and uh, they said, you know, thank you, because all the other departments, they migrated back and forth between various frameworks, and whatever they did, it basically died. And and yeah. we focus on business logic, and of course, it's not that nice, but probably now we can, you know, uh, uh, improve it a bit, and, and, and we talk about open liberty and removing the interfaces, and what they have right now is more or less POJOs with a view annotations, but the same code, which is uh, 10 years old, and they were very efficient and just focused on business logic. So it's just, this is why I was so curious why, why you are interested in APIs. Right. That, that's exactly the point. You, you just write code and keep it forever, in, in quotation marks, ever. Um, you, you don't have to to rewrite it again and again and again if if you want to use new tools or use a competitive tool and that's that's my my personal inspiration when when I'm writing code that I want to write code forever I I don't want to write code to throw it away so that's why I I'm deeply in specifications and, and norms yeah and standards yeah, for me it's a little bit different. So I, uh, uh, if I write code, I don't care that much whether it's forever or not. But what I don't like is to fiddling with the implementation. You know, to finding the best implementation yeah. before I start, I'm absolutely not interested. I would rather mm -hmm. start with something, and if I'm not happy with it, switch to something else, to a different application mm -hmm. server, let's say. Right. So I, right. let's right. say we can start with uh, Whitefly, and if we don't like the experience, we can go to Payara. And then, you know, if we don't like Payara, we can go to Open Liberty. And this is the freedom, yeah. what I like. And I don't yeah. have to argue with clients, you know, which application server to choose. I tell them, whatever you get, you know, the best price, if you need support, or if you don't need support, just run whatever you like. Our application should run everywhere. And this is mostly true. You know, so, uh, Eclipse Link and Hibernate are mostly compatible. Of course, there are corner cases, but it works. And yeah. and if you skip the persistence, everything else is very compatible, actually. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, the 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 thing is, the that application servers themselves uh, are are not so um, future proof mm -hmm. anymore. If if we're looking what we're doing here currently, we have a Payara application server. Mm -hmm. And the, the decision to use it was made five years ago. And we thought, yes, now Payara is the thing. We will keep that forever. Mm -hmm. And um, meanwhile, we started to write microservices. And mm -hmm. um, Payara stands in the way a bit. Not mm -hmm. Payara itself, but the fact that it's an, a full-blown application server. Mm -hmm. So we want to write smaller applications with less boilerplate and want to strip things we don't need. And uh, we now notice that it's very funny to write uh, microservices in Java SE by using the libraries directly, like Jersey, but with standard interfaces, mm -hmm. uh, but not using the application server. So you have to fit, uh, fiddle around a bit with mm -hmm. the products, but you still have the standards in your products. And what what I am missing is that uh, we we start to concentrate on the future. So we, we still talk about Jakarta EE uh, application service. We, we need to start talk about Jakarta EE, let's say 11 or 12 uh, running in in uh, the microservice space, not on application service, but on, on the cloud space. And the vendors Marcus? are very Marcus? reluctant to do that. We have one hour. Now, oh. what, what you should do. Really? Yeah. We should now, uh. we should now, uh, you should, where the... Uh, where the audience can find you. What is the URI and uh, what is your your Twitter account, GitHub account, and whatever? If, if, if you if you want to stay update with my personal rants, uh, best is you go on my blog site. Um, just Google for head crashing informatics. Head crashing then. informatics. Mm -hmm. Head crashing informatics, and okay. you will find me. My my Twitter handle is. Um, uh, head crashing. Mm -hmm. It it basically is the same page, but forwarded to Twitter. And what I like to do, I have not done that. I, what I like to do is start uh, on YouTube, but there there is no decision yet when and how and in what form. But I, I really look forward to do that this year. Yeah, and what I would like to do forward is to record a very soon the next episode with you about Jakarta, Jaxores, and future. Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Would, see you. Would, would, would be happy. Yeah. See Bye. you. Bye.